Thank you so much for joining us today on Passion. I'm your host, Britt Ivey, and today we have with us local celebrity, Jeff Golden. Thank Hi. you for inviting me on, Britt. I'm real glad to be here. Well, I'm thrilled you're here. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation. We have a lot to talk about today. I am excited to speak about immense possibilities, which is your brainchild, your current baby, as, as one would say, and I'd like to enlighten our audiences as to how that began. Why did you start that wonderful television show, which can be seen on OPB, um, SOP TV? Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. It's, it's been a ride, and we've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, IP, as we call it, is uh, going into its sixth season. We started in 2011. And it really came out of my, well, long term came out of a career in media and politics that was kind of socially, politically motivated. I went into media to influence things, to try to nudge the world and the country and the community in, in the directions that you know, I'd like to see it go at any rate. And, and tried a lot of different things to do that, including newspaper editorials, uh, 10 years of a talk show on Jefferson Public Radio. And I, I think I went into it with the idea that we form our opinions and decide who to support politically based on a kind of a rational debate of ideas. And so if I could bring people on my shows that were especially articulate in the direction that I think uh, things should go, that people would be persuaded and move that way. And what I discovered was people are not sitting around waiting for me or anybody else to tell them how to think. We <laughs> pretty much think already what we're going to think, especially about the issues that we talk about a lot. So after 10 years of talk radio, I, I sort of took stock. And I said to myself, what are the shows that have really had impact? What are the shows where I hear a lot of feedback, where people say they were touched? And they weren't when people came on to argue politically. They were when our guests were people who were really passionate about what they did and engaged with the community to, in something larger than themselves to make the world a better place. And people were inspired by that. So I thought, well, what if I do a whole series based on that? Passionate people doing things to build a future that works uh, and see how that inspires people. And that was the seed of immense possibilities. Originally, it was going to be a radio show, and then we decided, especially because we wanted younger viewers too, a multi-generational audience, mm -hmm. to move to video. And we started it on Southern Oregon Public Television in 2011. And this coming year, we expect it to be on somewhere between 10 and 20 PBS stations. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. That is quite an accomplishment. After 10 years on the radio, I know that's one way you became a bit of a celebrity. Um, you decided then that trying to convince people about your way of thinking was not the way to go. Right. And I love how you just put it, and I'm also going to read a quote that is on the web because mm -hmm. You are on the World Wide Web with immense possibilities. Anyone can see any of the 140 episodes right. at any time. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. At, That's at a lot of episodes. At At immensepossibilities.org. Fantastic. You're finishing my sentences. <laughs> you must be a talk show host. <laughs> you know where we're going. This quote that I have here from um, Michael Sherman, the author of Going Local, and the author of The Small Mart Revolution. He's kind of the guru of the localism movement in some ways. Interesting, interesting. Well, I love the Small Mart Revolution title because, you know, we've got the whole Walmart ginormous, everything big, big, everything huge, you know, and, and that's a catchy title, The Small Mart Revolution. And what you're doing is actually taking people where they're at in whatever corner of the world they're in, in their, say, small business, um, personal family life, whatever it is that they're doing, and encouraging them to make their corner of the world better. Mm -hmm. And people are much more likely to get engaged on the community level than the national level because you're working with neighbors and you can see progress. And sometimes the national scene is just so big and resistant to change that it's hard to, to see that progress. So activism tends to at least start locally. That's very well put. One of my favorite quotes, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. So it sounds like after 10 years 
of trying to perhaps sway opinion, you realized people kind of have their own opinion, they're going to stick with it, but you offer people talking about their passions, putting forth their businesses, what they do in their corners of the world, uh, to make the world a better place, as you said. And you showcase that. Mm -hmm. I love that. So quite a build up to this clip here from Michael Sherman. He says, immense possibilities really is immense because of its creative emphasis on what works on actual people whose resourceful ventures are solving actual problems and building communities that can weather through tough seas ahead. Mm -hmm. I love that. And we have a consensus out there that there may be some tough seas ahead for this country. So It, it could happen, yeah. <laughs> and Without I, I, making it a political show, that stands to, to reason. And I'd like to speak to that because, you know, if your diet of media is the headlines and the lead stories in the news, you're probably a pretty depressed person. It's pretty toxic. <laughs> it's pretty dark in a lot of ways. Yeah. But in, historically, at the darkest times, the times when the biggest institutions are really struggling or collapsing, that's when innovation really bubbles to the surface. That's where people get together and go, that isn't working. Let's put together something that is. So if you look at the history of the Great Depression in the 30s, all kinds of amazing stuff happened then to, to fill the void that the big institutions weren't uh, c covering. So we're in that kind of a time now. It, you know, the, the cliche is it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. We read constantly about the worst of times, but we're not paying enough attention to the best of times, the really innovative, creative, just energy-packed stuff going out there, and that's what we hope to shine lights on in immense possibilities. Fantastic. Well, I love that about you. Hmm. Might as well look at the positive side of things. There's enough negative out there to get us through eternity, probably, if we never created one more negative thing. And so, it can be toxic if that's all you're looking at. I agree. I agree. So that's a, a very appropriate clip describing what immense possibilities is here for, really. And you believe that turning on people's heart light, I would say like E.T., turn on your heart light, setting them on fire is a better way of being of service in the world. And I've got one other quote here to describe what we were just speaking about. With Americans waking up almost every day to a barrage of discouraging, disempowering news stories, immense possibilities is exactly what we need right now. And that was a quote from author Ocean Robbins, also on your website. That's, that's fantastic. I love that. Thank you. It's long been a, a dream to get more positive out there. So that's why I love passion doing what I do. Mm -hmm. People on the show talking about what they're passionate about and obviously you're passionate about this. Well we're we're in similar businesses. We got a, a similar strategy going mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. don't preach it people. Let me tell you about what we should do on health care and foreign policy and I did that for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you know show people who've come alive. Can I share one more quote that's on the masthead Please that was do. just so pivotal Please do. in my thinking. I, I talk about this shift from trying to persuade people. Do you have you well, must have it memorized. I was yeah, excited I about this. So. It was from a, a veteran civil rights worker and, and minister named Howard Thurman and he said don't ask what the world needs ask what makes you come alive and then do that because what the world needs is people who've come alive. And I cannot add anything to that. I think that's a brilliantly wise quote, and it sort of guided, guided the development of immense possibilities. Perfect, perfect. Sh you know, showcase people who've come alive and what they're doing and see how people feel about it. See, uh, uh, hopefully people not only like their social inventions, mm -hmm. the programs that they're doing, but see someone on their show, you, maybe you'd try to do the same thing with your guests, and go, that person's life is better. Their days are better because they're engaged uh, actively in building a better world and something bigger than themselves. I'd like some of that. And we're trying to coax people or put people in touch with what I think is an almost universal desire to, to give back and serve that gets squished down for a lot of reasons in, in current times. And if we can show people who are kind of ignoring all the news that they can't, they can't really do anything, they're not powerful, and just go for it mm -hmm. and see how much they get out of that, maybe that, I think that probably impacts viewers a lot more than anything I could say. I agree. I agree. That's very well put. 
I love having people on the show that are lit up. It sounds like you yep. do the same thing. Yep. Same Lights thing. me up. Excellent. Me too. Well, with that in mind, we're going to go to our first clip, which is from Immense Possibilities. It's a lovely clip by the editor of Chief, editor in chief of Yes Magazine. And this is a magazine, I believe, on Bainbridge Island? Right. It's, right? A, it's a national magazine that publishes out of Bainbridge Island, right. Washington State, that is one of the inspirations for immense possibilities. Fantastic. All right. Well, anything you'd like to tell our audience before we go to clip well, one? Well, this is Sarah Van... It's a trailer, uh, and we, all of our episodes have trailer. And it's Sarah Van Gelder, the editor-in-chief, as you said, and she, last year, got in her van and traveled for five months around America. To just see what what's going on, what are what are the possibilities in America, and we had her on the show afterwards, and she sort of summarized the things that really impressed her. Great, great. Okay, with that in mind, studio, let's go to clip one. Because really, people want the same things. They want livelihoods that can continue into the future. They want to have water that their kids can drink safely and air that they can breathe. My vision really has always been that every person on earth should have access to the same healthy food. This land is treated as well. It's treated the, the Northern Cheyennes that were here before our time. It's, it's treated them well. It's a good country, and we want to keep it that way. Now, I have to say that community work is really tough, you know. There's all the disagreements, and people get into arguments, and sometimes it gets petty. So I'm not saying it's easy. I just think it's our best shot. Whoa! I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. The end of that trailer is so visually beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. I am told by the studio we have only 10 minutes or so left, and I'm sitting here panicking. Wait, there's so much material. This is so rich, more than I even understood at our pre-interview. So mm. thank you so much for being here. I'm liking being here. It's really fun to have you here and just to feel lit up and experience what you experience every time. You know, we do these shows. I've had the most fabulous guests. There's so much talent in Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. We live in this area where there is an immense, immense, amazing of talent, mm -hmm. a, amount of talent. And I just don't want to focus the whole show on this, but you also are very talented on stage mm. and have done a lot of community theater. You've done a lot of work at Camelot and Oregon Stage Works, et cetera. So perhaps you'll consider another show. We can have the entire show be uh, about your performance and how you light up the stage and bring that kind of liveliness to other people. So we have a, a clip from Zorba the Greek that we may or may not get to this time, but I would like to be able to showcase that at some point. Is that, do I have your permission to do that? Sure. Okay. All right. One more thought on immense possibilities. This is the last quote I will read that's also on your website. I guess it would be kind of a mission statement type quote. And for me, it really exemplifies legacy thinking. You're not just thinking about Jeff Golden. You're thinking about the next generation and the next generation. And it's evidenced in this quote on your website. Immense possibilities ignites realistic hope with inspirational stories of community victories. It showcases ordinary people whose passion and creativity are blazing trails to a healthy future for our children and grandchildren. See what we've discovered in the realms of community breakthroughs, local independence, sustainable solutions, environmental sanity, generations coming together, and awesome social inventions. That's quite a mouthful and quite an intention. And from the episodes that I viewed, I've not seen all 140. Well, get on that, Brett. <laughs> I need you to watch them all. They're amazing. And they do deliver just what this promises. Mm. So I want to personally thank you as well for looking out for future generations. Mm. Well, I, I you know, I am have more, what do they say, 
more yesterdays than tomorrows in my life, mm. and I have two kids grown mm. now. And you know, it is part of our, uh, our the human instinct to worry or have some concern for who comes after us, the next generation. And we've kind of lost that. We've, you know, we, um, you know, I think my parents, when when they talk, the greatest pride that they had in their lives, they're both gone now, is that they lived their lives with us and our children in mind. And I think that's really dimmed in the last 30 years. That we, we have a me culture, what's in it for me culture, mm -hmm. that has really subordinated that. And I think we're the losers, those of us who are getting older, don't have that pride that my parents had, don't have a reason, for the most part, I'm really generalizing, uh, don't have that pride that we are handing on the torch in a good way, that we're giving our kids real opportunity for a great life. And um, for the rest of my career, I'd like to push back in the other direction and work with young people. Talk, you talk about the brilliance of people in this area. A lot of the people I meet in the show who just astound me are 20 and 30 somethings. Wow. And they're, um, you know, they, there's all these negative stereotypes about the slacker generation. I don't know where that came from because I'm seeing real brilliance and real passion. And it's not the same way that you and I do things necessarily, mm -hmm. but, um, or at all, but we need to bless that and support that. And so we try to do some shows that have in intergenerational dialogue of which there is not much when you, you look out there in the media. Beautiful, I agree. I agree. So we can push forth this goodwill for the next generations by doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that you do have so many young people lit up as well. That gives me hope because I agree with you. There was a focus in our parents and our grandparents' time really to look forward more than now. As as you know, the, uh, being in television, the average attention span of the average human, when I was at CBS, was six seconds. This was a long time ago. And now, I imagine it's maybe two and a half. I don't know, it's short. It's short, it's very short. And so you and I, who want to do a different kind of media, face a challenge of making what we do interesting and giving it mm -hmm. some energy and spark. Mm -hmm. And I rely on the how interesting and passionate my guests are to do that. Because really, you know, we've heard about good news media for a long time. How come there isn't more good news media? One of the big answers is a lot of it's been started and hasn't been able to draw an audience because it doesn't have that edge of conflict and violence and mm -hmm. the stuff that appeals to our reptile brain. So I'm still working on the challenge of making good news media interesting and compelling. I would love it, I'd love to think about two workers on Friday saying, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm gonna go home and watch Immense Possibilities. And I don't know how often that happens, mm -hmm. but we can't <laughs> criticize people for not watching more uplifting media if we don't make that media interesting and really relevant and compelling to them. I agree, very well put. The end of that clip on the, Les, the Yes magazine that we just saw with the sky jumpers and the beautiful visuals of the ocean, you really bring that element of visual pleasantry to your shows as well. I've noticed that. Well, one resource well. is there's, the, you know, people ask, are we going to have field crews to go out and shoot mm -hmm. our guests out in the field? We don't do that, largely for budgetary reasons. But the other thing is, Online, there is an endless supply of great video that's not getting out there. I can go to YouTube and search for something and find a video that just knocks my socks off and it's got like 32 views on it. And so when I contact wow. these producers and these videographers and say we'd like to use your clip for a public TV show, they're, they're say, they are all in. So that's, that's a resource of the time, underused, a bunch of underused video that really um, touches people. Perfect. That's great. So you're furthering those artists as well by a, showcasing a mutual them. benefit. Mutual benefit. Well, speaking of which, I didn't mention to you the intro music to Passion is "We Can Change the World." Ah. So here we are talking about how we can do that, and you're out there doing that as you can with immense possibilities. That was from a, a band called Elliot, who are friends, and they gave me permission to use that and. I've just been thrilled to use such a positive song. Uh, another artist friend of mine here did this beautiful lion. She's in California. And Eliena is uh, the artist. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of, of 
making the world better in any way that we can and putting forth other people's passion, be it the video that you find or a piece of art and uh, or our wonderful crew today in the studio. We've got a great crew here today. So we are going to go to another clip that you brought from Immense Possibilities. And this is about sustainable farming. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of farming going on in this area. A lot of people interested in wholesome food instead of plastic food. And that could be a whole other show by itself. But right now we are going to share with the audience um, another clip from Immense Possibilities. Again, a trailer. Our shows are 28 minutes long. Trailer, pardon me. And these me. Uh, teasers or trailers are a minute to two minutes long. And, and then Perfect. people, if they choose to, can click from there to the full show. So they can click on any one of these teasers. Mm -hmm. So there would be 140 of those. Though they're not that many. They're the okay. more recent ones. But the, the easiest way to see episodes is just to go to immensepossibilities.org. That's what I did. Simple as pie. Mm -hmm. Seen it. Seen it live too as it airs. Okay, then we will share with the audience clip number two about family farms. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I can think is, is that I am going to be doing good things today. We want to create a farm here that will be here for our children's children. Before we explore what that means, we want to introduce you to a couple of the people busy feeding us and who really love their land. The ground's all nice and moist, real warm, smells good, smells great. We're, we're into a, an era of limitations and an era when we have to think more about what we're doing and our impacts. Extinction of species and lessening of water. When do we learn that our actions are consequential? Good, how are you doing? All of a sudden you have a place for the community to come together. It's not on a polit you know, political issue, it's not religion, it's, you know, it's around food and they can come together and be a community. And that has re really brought that back. It is just a fundamental human thing. You go, you see the produce, you meet the farmer. I mean, it goes on around the world every day. In a way, it turns back the clock a century to more what farms used to be decentralized and small and connected to their communities. And hopefully it moves it forward a century, too. You do the best you can for as long as you can and depend on the future. That's just a taste of Immense Possibilities, our weekly series on inspired projects and people we want you to know about. See that click here link below? Good. That's where you click to watch this full episode to find out more about immense possibilities. Welcome back to our audience and welcome back, Jeff. I really enjoy these teasers. I think it's a brilliant way of letting people see snippets of 28 minute shows. So then they can decide to go in and, and go in depth into the subject matter or move on to the next. Yeah, that's, that's the, uh, the effort, that's the point. And if you, know, if you go to the episodes page and you see the clip, you know, um, figureheads of these 140 episodes with a title and a sentence, you're not gonna be interested in all of them. No, mm -hmm. Nobody's interested in all 140, but mm -hmm. you can go and look and the ones you care about, you know, they're, they're, I think I can guarantee there'll be some for everybody, the things that they care about. and. Uh, and I don't expect people to watch every show, despite what I said to you before. <laughs> well, I am excited to see more of them and what's ahead for immense possibilities. Mm. I, I think your vision will expand. Um, I feel that the airing spots will continue to grow across the country mm. as people do get excited about this type of positive media. And. One other thing that we spoke about that intrigued me at our pre-interview, which was the notion of every human having two wolves inside of them. I know it's not brand new, but you described it in a beautiful way. Can you tell our audience a little bit about what that means to you? Well, we used that old story as a structure for a general promo for the show which is on the upper right-hand corner of the website. If right. people go there, it's a five-minute video. But I think a lot of people have heard this before, but it is said that it's part of Native American wisdom, and the story goes that a Cherokee elder was sitting around the fire with his grandchildren, 
and uh, started talking about the two wolves inside of them. And one of the wolves is greedy and violent and dominant and um, selfish, and the other is compassionate and joyous and loving and generous. And the story goes on for a while as he describes the two wolves battling inside of him. And one of the grandchildren asks, well, grandfather, which one wins? And he answers, the one that I feed. And um, I, you know, people <laughs> can look inside to see how much they can resonate with that. I certainly do. So we're trying to feed the, um, the wolf that is uh, more connected to our higher selves with this, this, these kinds of stories. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks for describing that. And the five-minute video in the top right-hand corner of your website is a great video. Mm, thank you. Yeah, five minutes, very enriching. I would encourage anyone to watch that video at immensepossibilities.org. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you so much for being on Passion today and sharing your passion for making the world a better place. Well, it's been a real pleasure. I thank you so much for inviting me, and I appreciate that week after week you bring people on who are passionate about what they're doing because, as I said, that, that's where I came to about how to make a mm -hmm. difference. Excellent. Well, thank you for that encouragement. And I'm hoping that you'll come on for a second show and speak about your theater. Mm -hmm. um, you start in Camelot and Hair at the Wind, Zorba the Greek, Judgment at Nuremberg. And that's only about half of the shows mm -hmm. that I know that you've been in. So those are a joy to watch. I'd love to share those with thank audiences you. as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on Passion, and we'll see you again. Okay. All right. Best of luck in the future. Thank you for joining us today on Passion, speaking with Jeff Golden about immense possibilities. Go out and enjoy the immense possibilities in your life. Bye-bye. <laughs>